Welcome to the Metaphoricist Magazine podcast, your home for beautifully made speculative fiction. The magazine is edited by B. Morris Allen, and I'm your host, Matt Gomez. This week's story is Hard Sunset by Sam Griffin. As a neurodivergent, queer, and disabled author of speculative fiction, Sam is many things. An academic, creative, middle-aged rebel, a problem solver, and chaotic mess. Her there recurring themes include liminality, becoming, entropy, being truly seen, and sex. Find her online at unquietwords.co.uk. Let's jump in. The curator hummed as they descended to the archive's power core, a jolly song that mimicked the chirping legs of dancers in a sunlit square and the whirling of lovers on a faraway summer afternoon. Days so warm and long there was nothing to do but weave sound until their feet ached and burned with the joy of life. The curator detected smoke, detected a fresh imbalance in their position. They looked down at a basement floor modeled with subsidence and new, sunbright cracks of breaking planetary crust. Smoke rose from the curator's six mismatched synthetic feet. Oh. On the far side of the impassable surface, the reactor cast a pale glow, etched with impossible numbers of coolant spirals. Dim compared to its former brightness, but the curator suspected it would nevertheless outlast everything else here, by at least several seconds. Remaining down here served no purpose the curator knew, and they still needed feet. One leg at a time, they backed up onto the stair. One of their feet already melted beyond repair. There's nothing to be done about it, and no reason to make a fuss, the curator said to himself, and left it there. Back on the upper levels, the archive's walls juddered, as erratic and out of tune and tempo as their guardian's failing voice. A stack of crystals tumbled loudly out of a storage bay, into the aisle, and rolled to a stop around the curator. No librarian scuttled over to retrieve them. All is as I expected under these circumstances, the curator mused, and out of habit, picked the crystals up to place in the return chute. Below, on the sorting tables, the data solids tumbled out over data solids, rolling to a stop among piles long abandoned by the last half-working librarian. The curator took the only working elevator towards the reading room. It shuddered and whined between the floors, lights flickering from amber to white to red as it stalled, disrupting both the curator's journey and their song. This would be an unfortunate place to spend their last hours, after a millennium of planning a few formal words to mark the demise of the archive. It was true there wasn't much point to an announcement. The last remaining librarian clerk processed nothing but indices, and there was nothing to be gained by making a speech to the curator's assistant, as all but the most rudimentary of its cognitive functions had long since expired. Nevertheless, the curator was expected, a duty of their position, to do such a thing, and they tapped again at the elevator's control disk. With the keening wail of a failing structure, the elevator ejected them onto the upper mezzanine. The final function performed, it slid down the shaft and shattered on the ground 30 seconds and 300 floors below. The curator thanked it quietly for its long service and limped to the reading room. There, the curator collided with the assistant, as they had every morning for as long as the curator remembered. The assistant whistled as it polished the blank screens with cloth, meticulously wiped down the seats and disinfected the auditory probes. Dust lay in sedimentary layers on the silent flutes, faded iridescent books, and everything else. The curator queried the necessity of the assistant's actions, At this, the assistant cocked its head on one side with a sigh. You never know, it said. But the curator did know, precisely, how improbable any hope was. The people had been an old species in a young universe, and all evidence suggested no other vibrant, thinking, creating beings existed in the cosmos. An entire civilization, even now the curator shuddered the word, alone. And the hives had been dying, No children, no tradition, no kin. The people had reached towards the future, built the archive on an empty world orbiting a binary star, and entrusted all they were to the curator. To eternity. There was enough left of the stairs for the curator to warily make their way up a level, to the outside viewing platform, and gaze up at the hole in the sky. 
How strange for there to be no tomorrow. The curator stopped humming their song, reflected on the oddness of the thought. Should I feel sad, they thought. Even anger would be appropriate. But they'd shed their biological body eons ago to fulfill a duty deeper than flesh, and any emotion was impossible. Nevertheless, they had long been aware of a certain emptiness, a lingering sense of having failed, just as they had failed to keep another promise made on a distant summer afternoon for the sake of another fruitless dance. Over the millennia since that day, one half of the stellar binary had tumbled towards its hungrier, heavier twin. Now, beneath the swirling, glowing disk of particles that had once been a sun, no eternity remained. Instead, the archive world surged and bulged with liquefied rock as it broke apart. The last dawn had come and gone. This evening, the sun would inevitably set for the last time before it, and the world it had once supported, became dust. No one had come to the archive. The people were forgotten, and the curator's life had, at the end of everything, been in vain. Today is proof the universe cannot abide forever. I am, perhaps, the last sentient mind in the universe, the curator said, dutifully dictating the speculation into the records for no one to hear. Thee was most totally never, said an unexpected voice. It took the curator several seconds to interpret the signal as a mutated, clumsy, single-tone form of their own language. Confused, they looked around, traced the sound to a shape in the doorway. A figure with an unfamiliar number of limbs, sealed inside some form of exoskeleton? Environment suit? Surely the shape was the hallucination of a wishful thought, just a damaged circuit in the depths of the curator's worn-out and patched brain. Greetings, formal neuter continued the strange creature, bending awkwardly in the middle. Canyons of error not found, with taking an excess of forward transition. The curator could not believe the reliability of the sensory input they received. Is this an alien? Here? Now? How had it got here? The curator accessed the archive sensors and found an aesthetic of overloads and exceeded parameters, an outlier datum in the vicinity of the roof. Barely minutes old. A ship. Do give me a moment, said the curator, calmly and politely. Somewhere in the recesses of the curator's mind, they hoped the visitor had some technology or magic to save the archive. They struck up the cheerful hum again. I need to compensate for the linguistic drift and your frankly terrible accent. The visitor gestured with its upper limbs in a way that did not seem threatening and the curator hastily processed. Systems unused for a billion years responded to the curator's summons, and a side routine brought light to the reading room, and images to its long, dull screens. The assistant's yelp of surprise carried through the conduits. Below, the reactor shuddered in time with a convulsing planet, and gave all it could. I'm sorry I took so long, the visitor said, as the curator accommodated the transformed words. It lacked total nuance, but that was also to be expected. I am sorry too, said the curator. The archive is at your disposal, comprising 7,000 physical artifacts, plus 684 billion zettabytes of data. The visitor tipped what might have been a head upward at the particulate sky. I don't think I can stay that long. You have storage on your ship. You can take much with you. I can't. The drive takes up so much space. It has to... to resist that. The figure waved a limb toward the bright ring in its dark core. The last of the curator's hope shattered in that moment. Then why did you even come? The curator thought. Only to realize too late they had spoken it aloud. I wanted you to know you weren't alone, the visitor said. To tell you I've followed pieces of your history across a thousand planets. I wanted to promise that your people are remembered. But not all of us. Not everything, said the curator. Overhead, brilliant white gases swirled towards oblivion. No, said the visitor. Not everything. But perhaps you could choose something special. The curator thought for many milliseconds. 
They thought of science, biochemistry, anatomical structures. They thought of brilliant crystalline buildings that murmured in the heat of a warm day. But the laws of the universe were universal. Bodies had ceased to matter long ago, and the houses were long gone. Then they thought of a sunlit afternoon and a lover's chirping limbs as they whirled around the square, and a promise unkept. I wonder, said the curator eventually, if you would have time to visit the music section. The world ended exactly six hours and 38 minutes later. The visitor had, some 3,000 seconds ago, climbed into its ship, humming the song the curator had taught it. They watched it go, watched engines of unfathomable design carry the people's last wish in the form of as many crystals as the visitor could fit in the pockets of its suit, to a young species in an older universe. One song, 1,000 years of music, and one lover's gift, never given, on a faraway summer day. The curator found just enough energy inside themselves to crawl down the crumbling stairs. They left a leg or two behind, but they didn't need to patrol anymore, didn't need to pay attention to counting. Simply, one final duty to keep. In the disintegrating remnant of the reading room, the curator, the first and the last, contentedly delivered their terminal speech to a half-working librarian and the assistant. The assistant stopped polishing for one long second to applaud. Flared brightly for a second more as the particles that had once been the archive and the assistant and everything else began their final and near eternal descent into the black hole. The curator hummed contentedly and returned to dance in the warmth of the sun. That was Hard Sunset by Sam Griffin. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you'd leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever platform you listen to us on. Or, better yet, share the magazine and podcast with a friend. If you'd like to listen to more speculative fiction, visit us online at magazine.metaphoricist.com or on Twitter at metaphoricistmag.com. 